All right, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel, Interaxis.io. We're going to move on talking about lending, and in this case, we're talking about lending using cryptocurrency and digital assets as an asset class. This is really uh, important because. Uh, institutions, individuals, family offices and such want to invest money in cryptocurrency and digital assets, right? So you have uh, institutions, you have family offices and such that, that have a tremendous amount of money and they want to put it into digital assets. In this case, we'll say Bitcoin, but it might be ETH, it, it, it might be uh, several other digital assets, it might be digital asset hedge funds. Um, it, it might be security tokens, whatever it might be, but they want to do this. Now, one of the, the harm, hallmarks that they look for in investing in an asset class is it, the potential. Can we use it as collateral? Because again, as we've said before, debt kind of makes the world go round. It makes the world economy work. So when they invest in an asset, they then want to take that asset, use it as collateral. Right. So if they put $5 million into this, they want this asset to go up in value, produce some sort of income, whatever it is. But then they want to take that $5 million, use it as collateral, and maybe they can go get a loan for $3 million and put that into some other asset. Okay, so maybe here, maybe they want this asset to go up 50% in value, right, because it's cryptocurrency and it's risky. They can then get use it as collateral for a loan, $3 million loan, let's say they they pay 5% interest, they're going to invest in some other asset that's maybe going to grow at 15%, and look how they've leveraged their money. They've taken $5 million they've invested. Hopefully, this will go up 50% because it's highly risky, right? But if they can get $3 million more dollars and make 10% on this spread, right, they, they make that much more money. They make $300,000 a year in addition to having this asset that, that they originally invested. That's huge for institutions and for, and for family offices and for anyone investing in uh, any sort of asset class, right, is the ability to utilize it as collateral. Now, it's not only institutions and family offices that want to be able to use it as collateral. It's individuals. It's investors. Okay, if, if the, the more retail of us, the, the more normal of us, I guess that aren't the family offices want to use uh, digital or want to use assets as collateral, right? If I have my money custodied at, uh, we'll call it TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, Betterment, whatever it, it, it is, whoever's going to custody my money. The custody part means they're actually holding the asset, right? They're, they're, if, if I buy stocks, if I buy Apple stock or Google stock or, or, or Tesla stock or whatever, and I have it held at one of these custodians, and that stock is worth, you know, we'll call it $1,000, they might say, look, we will, we'll let you borrow 500 against that. And I can either, you know, potentially borrow it as margin, right, which means I can, I can actually buy $1,500 worth of stock for my 1000 or I can potentially just borrow the $500. And if, and if it's a, a company that also comes with kind of a checking type account, like a TD or Fidelity or Betterment does, they might put $500 into my bank account that I can then go use, and they're holding this as collateral. Okay, they're holding my stock because they know, and, and we have some sort of agreement that says if this goes down in value to you know, a certain amount, or if I don't pay this loan back, they'll just take that stock from me Right? or they'll take $500 worth of it as collateral. And they can feel comfortable knowing that. And, and the reason why is because these are publicly traded companies. They know that, one, they're holding them as custodians, right? They have the, um, they, they actually own it by, by way of the transfer agent. They're actually the owners, I'm the beneficial owner. Okay, so they actually have it, meaning if I don't pay, our agreement says that they can just take it and, and they're, they're now the owners and I don't have as much uh, Tesla or Google or Apple stock anymore because I haven't paid this loan back. Okay, and, and they feel comfortable with that. Now, I feel comfortable. I feel good knowing, look, as long as my money's tied up in this stock and I want this stock to go up, I sure would like to borrow against that. I don't want to have to sell this in order to get cash. Well, that's the same thing that institutions, uh, family offices, large companies. And when I say institutions, I mean large, uh, very, very large investment companies. I mean pension plans, right? Multi, multi-billion dollar pension plans. Uh, when they invest in assets, they might 
they, they might also want to get loans against those assets. When even smaller companies, when they invest in assets, they might want to get loans against them because they don't necessarily want to sell the asset in order to get cash if they need it or if they want it for another investment. Because if you have to sell the asset, sometimes you have a, a, a taxable gain, right? If I buy you know, $10,000 worth of, uh, we'll call it Tesla stock, and that $10,000 goes to $15,000 worth of stock, right? Because the value goes up and I, and I need cash, let's say I need $3,000 cash for, for some purpose. If I sell this, I have a $5,000 capital gain. Well, this might have only been six months. It might be a short-term capital gain. I don't want that. I pay a high tax bill. Well, if I can borrow it, if I can borrow $3,000 at, you know, 6% interest or something like that, I'd much rather do that because of, because the difference in a short-term capital gain and a long-term capital gain here might be 15% interest, might be 15% tax. That's a big deal. I don't want to have to do that. I would rather just borrow and pay the interest. Okay, so there's so many reasons why it's so important that digital assets and cryptocurrencies can be used as collateral. This is a big deal. So now enter, uh, now, now keep in mind banks have been leery of this. They have not been wanting to, to view cryptocurrency as collateral. And partially it's because of the volatility, right? So you have this volatility. They didn't know how to price it. So if Bitcoin was at, you know, $20,000 for, for one Bitcoin, and they gave you a loan and Bitcoin, you know, falls all the way down to $3,000, what do they have as collateral? They don't have nearly as much collateral. This is not good for banks. They didn't really understand. They still don't understand Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and digital assets. So they were not prepared to utilize it as, as collateral. They weren't prepared to view it as collateral, partially because they didn't understand how smart contracts work and, and all that. So you have companies that have come out like BlockFi, which we've talked about before, like Drawbridge, which we've talked about, uh, and, and like Genesis, right? And, and there are a bunch of others. There are a lot of companies that are offering this because they want kind of this prime brokerage, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But these companies have said, look, we're going to offer, uh, we're, we're going to let you use cryptocurrency as collateral and we're going to lend you money. We'll hold on to, to the cryptocurrency. And how do some of them do it? Well, the way, some, well, the way many of these do it, and remember, this, this is not necessarily a decentralized finance thing yet. This is literally, we're going to view your cryptocurrency as collateral just like we would view your stock, your, your Tesla, Google, Apple stock, your mutual fund as collateral because we know how to structure it so that we can take it if we need to because you didn't pay your loan. So the way something like uh, BlockFi works is I send, if I want to, if I have, say, two Bitcoin, right, and the Bitcoin is worth, say, $10,000 each, so let's say I have $20,000 worth of Bitcoin, right, at 10, you know, two of them, they might give me a loan for $10,000 cash. Well, the way it works is this goes into a smart or, or this actually goes to a wallet that's, that's theirs, essentially. This goes to a wallet, and it's denoted that I got this $10,000 loan. So I send my 20000 my two Bitcoin, to this wallet. I get $10,000. Sorry, I get $10,000, and I pay them back interest. Okay, now, if the price of Bitcoin falls significantly, they, they can actually liquidate me. Now, the nice thing is BlockFi, in, in, in this case, is actually a, a real company, uh, and, and they're doing, this is not just a protocol, right? So they'll actually, if the price of Bitcoin falls significantly, which it actually did in March, instead of liquidating everyone automatically, they'll actually make phone calls. Hey, can you get some more cap capital in the account? Can you put some more Bitcoin in or some dollars or something to, to shore up? We think this is a short-term thing. Um, same with uh, Genesis, same with Drawbridge. Now, the, the nice thing is, as I'm paying back this interest, if the price of Bitcoin goes up, I still get access, I still get exposure to the value of Bitcoin going up. So if I want to hold it as, a, uh, as an asset that I want to go up in value, I can do that and I can borrow cash against it because you know that you don't want to sell you know, volatile assets like this. You don't know when they're going to go up and down by a, a significant amount. Um, so th this is uh, extremely important. Now what we have is 
companies kind of competing, and, and we'll talk about this in some other videos, but companies kind of competing to put all these uh, digital asset services together. Okay, and the digital asset services are things like custody, right? Custody is who is holding it. So these digital asset custodians might actually, they, they basically will create a wallet for you and they'll hold on to your assets. So they'll, they have insurance, they'll, they will uh, hold on to the wallets, they might, there might be some uh, uh, multi-sig keys, some multi-sig wallets going on. So they have a key, we have a key. Um, that they have it in, you know, if something happens to me, then they will, they'll have the key that they can uh, utilize to, to unlock it. But they might be custodying my assets. And this custody might be uh, Bitcoin, it might be ETH, it might be security tokens, okay? And they'll probably have some sort of insurance that says if their wallets, if their technology gets hacked, if someone steals it, they'll be able to make me whole or, or give me some of my uh, funds back. Uh, but, but as they custody, they're, they're trying to get users, they're trying to get investors to custody there rather than holding it in their own hard wallet or their own uh, cold storage or whatever it might be. These companies that, that want to custody, this, is, this might be BitGo, Gemini, Genesis, all these others, they want to custody. And, and so what they're also doing is they're offering lending. And they're saying, look, yeah, we'll charge you a, a little fee to custody your assets. We're going to take care of a lot of the security and technology and everything, but we will allow you lending capabilities. So we will lend you money based on your assets. We can, of course, see them because they're custodied with us. We know how much you have, and so we will give you cash in the form of you know dollars or, or whatever else it might be. This is tremendous because they're trying to create you know, sort of, of banks, the way, the way we have banks, the way we have custodians, again, like TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, uh, Pershing, some of these very large custodians, they're trying to create this in the, in the crypto, in the digital asset world. And some of it might be aimed at um, just holding on to your Bitcoin or holding on to your ETH or holding on to your digital asset or your, your cryptocurrency as an investment. Some of it might be aimed at getting that security token crowd, the, the, the people who are looking to issue security tokens that are denoting real estate or hedge funds or whatever it might be. And these custodians want to hold it and, and they understand the technology to the point that they can now utilize that as collateral and say, look, we know you're holding these security tokens, this investment you have in real estate, in a digital representation of real estate, and therefore we understand the technology. We understand that we can take this security token, right, and if you and if it's worth a hundred thousand dollars that you invested in here, we and and you want a loan for, you know, say fifty thousand cash, we're gonna lock up fifty thousand worth of this security token and we know it's not volatile because we understand we're not talking about cryptocurrency, we're talking about a security token that denotes real estate or something like that. So we're gonna lock this into some sort of smart contract. We're gonna give you fifty thousand dollars cash that you know to, to a bank account that you can do with whatever you want to do with we don't really care to be honest because we have this as collateral and if you don't pay us we know that we can take this fifty this fifty thousand dollars of of um, security token of real estate and we can actually um, take it take it from you we you know we know who the transfer agent is and everything else and, and because this is all done digitally we can take it now we're starting to have custodians that understand that and the fact that we have a lending that that they understand that means that they can lend you cash. They can lend you fiat currency based on your cryptocurrency or your digital assets as collateral. This is huge because as we've said before, debt makes the world go round. If I have an asset and it has value, I want to be able to take that value and lend it to someone else or you do something else with it and earn even more on it. If it just sits there illiquid, then I'm very limited into only the growth of that asset. But if I have an asset that has some sort of value and I can unlock the value of it by lending it and not have to go through the tax consequences of selling it, not have to go through any of the other consequences of selling it, that has tremendous value and that is what potentially gets more and more investors into the cryptocurrency and digital asset space. So that is a bit, some of the, the companies we talked about here, uh, we talked about BlockFi, there's also Drawbridge uh, out of Chicago. And what Drawbridge will do in addition to lending you money is they will help you with 
with things like hedging and options because there are derivatives now based on your cryptocurrency. So if you have uh, Bitcoin or ETH, they can help you with the derivatives and they can help you say, all right, you're going to borrow from us, but we're also going to hedge a little bit and we're going to have a, a, a hedge against this Bitcoin and we're going to help you purchase that. They're going to help you manage your money in addition to the, the, the actual lending. Okay, so Genesis has these capabilities. Gemini is starting to have these capabilities, and they're starting to roll up different providers that include custody, wallets, um, transfer. It includes now lending, which is a big part, and we're starting to see these roll up, and that is what potentially brings more investment into the space because now I feel comfortable with the fact that if I put money into this asset, I can actually get that value back out without having to sell it. Right, or without having to rely on income. For instance, in the case of Bitcoin that doesn't produce income, I can now unlock some of that value, go lend it out, and actually get some interest based on the value of my Bitcoin. And if the interest I earn or the gain I earn is bigger than the interest I have to pay, then I come out ahead. Right? So that is a little bit about lending, utilizing cryptocurrency and digital assets as an asset class. We'll go into more use cases in, in some of the other companies that are doing it in future videos. Hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe to the, the YouTube channel. Uh, find us on Twitter at Interaxis8. Uh, our, our email address, info at interaxis.io. And we'll see you in the next video.